Well, I can't get enough, man. I don't think we're gonna get enough. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Come on, man. Look, come on. Uh, damn it. Hey, look at this jackpot. Exactly what I wanted. My favorite brand. I smoke them anywhere. Smoke them if I can get them. Hey, uh, good evening. How do you do? Uncle Carl here to see my nephew Jeff. You know, I assume everything has been taken care of. What was the last name again? Carl. First name, Uncle. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me double check the list. I'll well, check it over. I know him there. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sir. I can't find your name anywhere. Uh, I see. Look, hey, if Johnny Carson were coming in here, would you have a ticket for him? Of course we would. Well, he ain't coming, so give me his. I'm sorry, sir. Your name's not on the sheet. I can't do anything for you. Look, don't get in my face. I'll sink you like a three foot putt. I don't need it, all right? But I'll tell you what, let me just come in and take a leak. Okay. All right, beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, there he is now. Look at him. Looking, looking like Mr. Big Shot there. There he is doing his dad. Frankly, I think it's disrespectful. Mm. All right. Good evening. How do you do? How are you tonight? I'm Carl Carlson. I was wondering if I could take this day. Whoa, whoa. Wow, I'm seeing double, but I'm feeling single. Whoa. Look at this. Pardon me, how do you do, ladies? I'd like to introduce myself. Carl Carlson, you probably know me as Uncle Carl. I'm the boy's uncle, and of course, Jeff is up there, uh, just move in here. We'd like to order some cocktails, have a round around, you know, we keep going around, we'll do it once, do it twice, whatever. You remind me a little of my, of my second wife. Back so to you, whoa. Yeah, anyway, look, like I was saying, when sir. I first met the boy, uh, I married a little boy back in 66, and hell, I, we went to it, I taught him how to play baseball. I just think, why don't you go back to where you came from, bud, or don't you think you'd fit? <laughs> So anyway, I Sorry, remember, you're gonna have to keep it down just a little hey, bit. Bud, why don't you get out of my face, all right? Because I don't need it. Pardon me while I take care of the problem here just a moment. Look, pal, I'm turning you right. Uh, uh. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jeff Altman. enough of that crap. <laughs> so how y'all doing? Where are you guys from? Oh, that's great. You know, it, it is the power of God, my friends. It is the power of God. Can you feel it? Would you like to feel it? Change your mind, didn't you, about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> will, will someone, will someone here please give me a nice bowl of mueslicks? <laughs> a nice big bowl of slivery, nice grape mueslicks. <laughs> this ain't jokes, pal. I just stand here and go fucking nuts. <laughs> Woo, come on home. Your hair has a permanent boner, my friend. Your hair is locked in. Hey, keep it that way. Yes. Well, the decade's over, friends, and has been for a while. 1989 wasn't a bad year. Caught up with all the evangelists. Jimmy Swaggart. Remember Swaggart? I am so sorry. <laughs> But the pussy was so good. <laughs> so they got Jim Baker, too. They got Baker. They took him away. He, he tried to get out of it at the end by pleading insanity. Remember, he's coming to... <laughs> Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, no. Lions and... <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Baker, you're still going away for 45 years. This shit doesn't fool us. Anybody hear the testimony in that trial? It was fantastic. I had, I had, my name was Jimmy Gittler. And I had talked to a number of men in the PTL who had told me personal they had seen Jim Baker give them a homosexual look. Not a hug and not a kiss. Just a look. You imagine that? Baker's in the middle of preaching. I need money. Tammy needs money. We all need money. <laughs> you
You know there's some big old boy sitting out there going. Hey, I believe that Baker boy is looking right over here. That's all right, Jim. You bend over, buddy. We'll drive you home. They say you can speak in tongues. I'm going to give you a chance. Let me ask you, my friend, do you have some muslicks for me? Do you have a nice bowl of... of I, is, there, is there one real man here tonight? Is there one real man here? Not a man among you. You're a real man, right? What'd you have for dinner, cowboy? Uh, lasagna. Lasagna? I had lasagna. You're a wimp, daddy. A real man don't have lasagna. A real man has an 18-pound butt steak. Big and good, hot and spicy, sweet and meaty. Hee hi, daddy. Butt steak, the king of steaks. I like it rare, real rare. I like a little hair left on the end of it. You want to be able to ride out on this thing, man. Hi, boys. How you? It's the boys. The boys is all here. Hey, we are shit kickers. We came in here to have some fun. What, what are you guys? Are you, you guys aren't the preppy homo club, are you? We all, we all went to Yale, Harvard, Emory, and uh, we like to sit around, wear regimental striped ties, and then go out and blow each other. <laughs> celebrate, I'm getting ready to celebrate, if you can believe this, my, my 11th, I was gonna say 10th, 11th wedding anniversary, I'm right, 11th anniversary. And uh, my, month, nine months ago, we had our first little baby girl. So now we're kind of resuming our normal marital coital relationship as things start to get back together again. Because you know the first few months before and the first couple months after, you can't do it real good. Now I, I know girls are sitting here saying, well, that's ridiculous. You can do it right up to the very end. How many have kids here tonight? How many? Guys, you remember what it was like around the eighth month? It's difficult. It's like trying to mount a medicine ball. Or <laughs> Honey, how's this? Is this okay? Can, is it, can you feel anything at all? Am I even close? Is it? And in the ninth month, you get the feeling someone down there is watching you. <laughs> hey, get out of here. This is my house. Take a hike. <laughs> and my little girl is so cute. She's just starting to talk. And uh, most kids say mom or daddy first. She looked at me. She went. Give me some more muslix. I said you don't want any more butt steak, sweetheart? No, only muslix. That's silly. How many guys here right now were six months ago uh, single on their own and now have a lovely woman that they're with or is making their life happy? Raise your hand. God bless you. Do you remember back about six months ago? Wouldn't a roll of roll toilet paper last you six, eight weeks? <laughs> Now, now you've got a, a new roll every two hours. You notice that? I know why. I, I cheated. I, I, I got in the shower and, and watched. I watched me. It's all in the way it's taken. You know, it's all in. Guys take a roll of toilet paper or take a sheet of toilet paper. It's very definite in the procedure. It's like, butt steak, he high. Woman takes toilet paper completely differently. It's like, They get a thing in their hand here, it looks like a, you can wash and wax a limo with this thing, man. Looks like a goddamn beehive. Two trees in Oregon are gonna fall down to make this happen. And what do they do with it? This is all. One little pat. And down it goes. 
Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Altman, there's about 400, 800 pounds of toilet paper caught in the uh, pipes underneath your home. I'd suggest selling the house. How many have kids? Raise your hand high again. Come on. They're great, aren't they? They make you feel smart. They really make you feel, because you know in the adult world, you can look like a really dumb shit. Uh, what's that, Mr. Gibbons? The IBM 6200? I have no fucking idea. But see, at home, that guy's a genius. <clears throat> no, Bobby. That's a cow. <laughs> that over there, that's a cow. You see a platypus in my nose right now, or a small dog. Dog? Dog? I am not a dog. And I am not a man. I am a dog man. I am the dog man of Chamonix. Oh, there are many dog men here tonight. I am looking for a dog woman. One that will help me bury my bone. She went like this. So I stay home a lot now. I, uh, Try to be a family man and uh, we try to do things. We discuss things. We watch a lot of TV. Our favorite show is Jeopardy. You like Jeopardy? Yeah, uh, yeah that son of a bitch, Alex Trebek. <laughs> he's just always so cute, you know. He's always on that show. He's always walking around there like he knows all the. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, Bob. The capital of Yemen is Sinai. <laughs> <laughs> like he knew. You take away the cards, he's blank as a fart. <laughs> And they have these people on these $100,000 winners. You see a pelican or, or a zebra in my nose right now. You see a zebra, a large goat-headed zebra in my nose. I hate, I hate those $100,000 winners, those guys that are back every week, you know. I feel really jealous of those guys, you know, because I don't know the answer. I'll be like, oh, Alex, I know. Oh, wait a minute, And I, you know, but these guys, they know everything. And I'm jealous till you meet them. Hi, my name is Floyd Griller. I live in Boogers, Montana. I'm assistant librarian here at State University. I enjoy reading and picking things off myself. Then we watched my wife's favorite show, Beauty and the Beast. Well, it's been, now it's been canceled, but it came back and now it's canceled again. Okay, okay, well, hey, look, make up your own minds. She likes the show. I never understood the concept. This is a guy, he's half man, half cat. He is a cat man. <laughs> this is a cat man roaming under the streets of New York, the sewers of New York, and he'll all of a sudden just stop for no reason and start reciting Shakespeare. <laughs> a cat that does Shakespeare. <laughs> Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake. I'm back. <laughs> Fucking A, man. <laughs> Fucking A, dude. How come all big pumped up guys always have a little twitch, you know? Ever seen? So I was... That's when the blood actually gets to the head, you know? <laughs> don't, 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 don't you understand? I, I have been in the desert for over two months. I am, I am asking only for a thimble full of muslix. Out there fantastic, aren't they? For the you ever notice you can always hear the first five words Bob Hope ever said, and then you can't hear anything after that? Yeah. I tell you, hey, those guys out there are fantastic. I'm just some out there. <laughs> yeah, I was playing golf out there with Chichi Rodriguez and Warren Fran The hell are you saying, man? <laughs> Does Dan Quayle remind
remind you of this guy in college? Do you guys get any more beer? <laughs> just, just some guy unconscious in a closet with barf all over him in a, you know, at a fraternity party, you know. Just, uh... And now, 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 thank God, they've sent him to Central America to solve all the problems, you know. We got Noriega now, but there's still problems, you know. And Quail is going to solve them. I don't understand this Noriega cat anyway. I mean, I, this is the ugliest motherfucker alive. And he has this, this, this drug problems with Noriega. I don't think the man has drug problems. His problems are fried food and chocolate. We watch, we watch commercials too much lately. How many have seen this commercial? They got some odd ones on right now. Guy's on his way to work, that's like... You know when my hemorrhoids flare up? <laughs> Who writes this? And when my hemorrhoids flare up? Maybe we've all had some pain. I don't think your hemorrhoids have ever flared up. I think a flare up, I see a guy parked off the side of the road with a torch coming out of his butt. <laughs> Detour, go around, take the canyon road. Too dangerous, hemorrhoids. Don't try it. Fire chains. Hemorrhoid. Flare up. Flare up to me means fire. It means combustion. Uh, honey, you're gonna have to throw these shorts out. I done burned the whole clear room. I love it when you see advertisers on TV like spend millions of dollars trying to make a product sound exclusive only to have it ruined by the local voiceover. Hello, my name is Jacques Boulieu. Are you looking for a fine French wine, one that is full bodied with a delicate bouquet? Why not try the finest grapes in all of Europe, the finest wine in all the world? Beaujolais. Available at Winn-Dixie. <laughs> There's another thing that, that ir irritates me, too. Uh, I, I hate it when you see great American heroes trade in all their fame for just a little bit of commercial success. Hello? I'm Neil Armstrong, captain and commander of the 1969 NASA space team that first went to the moon. You know, my men and I felt mighty lucky that day 21 years ago, but when I want to feel lucky now, I call the dateline 976-1324. 976-1324. Neil Armstrong. <laughs> I don't even know why we hate going to the dentist. Why do you think? Yes. Why do we hate? All of a sudden, I'm talking to a rain man, you know? I like the dentist. I like the dentist very much. But you don't want to this for you. I like the dentist very much. I like the dentist very much. I'm an excellent driver. I'm an excellent driver. Why, why do you hate the dentist? That's it. That's the answer. That is almost, nobody, nobody knows that. They all say it's the pain. It isn't the pain, it's the loss of control. You walk in there, it's as if you're in deep hypnosis, right? <laughs> Hello, my name is Dr. Schwindler. You're welcome into my office. I'm coming in, Dr. Schwindler. <laughs> I'm coming into your office. You will sit in my chair. Yes, I'm sitting now, Dr. Schwindler. I'm sitting in your chair now. <laughs> I just fell on my ass, Dr. Schnindler. I will now remove all your pubic hair one at a time. Take anything you need, Dr. Schnindler. You don't need to do this, man. You gotta take the thing into your own hands, man. You gotta reverse the balance of power. Write down these four things, try them next time you go in. Number one, whatever he puts in your mouth, swallow it. <laughs> Number two, when he removes that silly sucking thing from your mouth, Continue making the same stupid noise. <laughs> Number three, when he leaves the room for a minute to take a picture or an x-ray, hide. <laughs> and number four, you gotta be one of the big butt steak boys to do this. When he gets down very close to your mouth for some intricate work, Kiss him on the lips.
<laughs> I told this routine in my day. What do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Kiss him on the lips, you son of a bitch. That's not. I'm not going to kiss anybody on the lips, you little bastard. Come here. I'll hit you so hard by the time you stop rolling, your clothes will be out of style. Come here, buddy. Boy, I don't need that kind of crap. I'll flatten you like a new driveway, pal. I'll sink you like a three-foot putt. Come here. I'll beat you like a rented mule, you little bastard. That's right, friend. And I can do it too. That's right. Yeah, bringing dates home was tough, introducing him to my dad, you know. Uh, Karen, this is my dad. He's just uh, standing here jingling his nuts. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> He'd always be dicking with me about what time to get in. What time do you think you're coming in tonight, friend? What time do you think you might walk in tonight, buddy boy? I'm telling you, I'll roll you out like wholesale carpeting, pal, and I can do it, too. <laughs> and slippers were flying around the room, you know. The girls were intimidated, you know. I, I beseech you. I beseech you, mommy, to bring me a tureen, a large fruit-ridden tureen of muslix. I want so much muslix, I sit and crap for 15 days. Anybody on a first date here tonight? Yeah, me, uh, me uh. You, you, How's it going? Enjoying it? No, no, really? Over here. Is it going okay? I would ask her. <laughs> what is this? All of a sudden, turned into firing line. Ah, oh, good evening, this is William Buckley Jr. Tonight's discussion will be on the first day. Uh, we are plan guests, uh, vice president. Uh, I can never see. I always thought first dates were something that just uh, too random for me. I wanted to know a little more. I thought you should be able to make a decision when the person shows up. Because girls always get oversold a date. You know, oh, he's handsome. He's really the doctor. He's full of money. You know, just like he shows up, it's like. <laughs> You should be able to make a decision at the door, you know, it should be like, uh-oh, well, let me ask you a question. Do you like sex? Mm -hmm. Do you like nature? Mm -hmm. Well, take a fucking hike. <laughs> See, I figured it out, you know. I figured it out, when I was in, uh, like, by the time I got second year of college, which was amazing in itself, <clears throat> You, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have to go. You shouldn't have to be locked into that next, you know, couple of hours together or four hours or however long, you know. You should be able to get out right away. I figured out a system when I was in college. You got to get the person out to your car, get all the windows rolled up, all the doors shut. You got to have a little hair, a little guts. It will get you out. You got to get them out. Gee, honey, you look lovely tonight. Where'd you like to go for dinner? Oh. I'm awfully so... You will never see this person again in your life. Now, I, I, girls are sitting here now, I know. They're going, this is gross. <laughs> guys are sitting here going, this is a damn good idea. Because you know guys got plenty of gas and we're dying to share it with the whole world. Especially if we love you. That's the irony. Because you can't tell if a guy loves you for sure, girls, until he's ready to take you into his fart confidence. You can't be sure if you've won his heart until he has that first big meal at your house. Boy, honey, the, them chickens is good, boy. I just like I like them. Once you hear the bodily functions, you own the man. feels comfortable at your house. Leave him alone. He loves you. <laughs> Guys are crazy with this, you know. We get nuts with it, you know, because... Uh, you, know, you know what your husband or boyfriend's like. He's sitting there. It's 11, 30, 12, 30 at night. He's sitting there in front of the TV. He's got, got like 25 packs of Doritos around him, half-eaten sandwich, 14 cases of Dr. Pepper and Coke, and just, he's all puffed up like a sea frog, you know. He's sweating salt. He's got a heartbeat of about 326, you know barely breathe. <laughs> Honey, I can't finish the more of these snacks. <clears throat> Come in here, baby. Help me out one time. Help, help, just pull my finger one time. Right? <laughs> Don't touch that finger. You'll spend the rest of your life in hell. We get the kids involved, you know. Hey, hey, baby. Come on in here. You know, Daddy just finished off an 18-pound butt steak. 
big and good, hot and spicy, sweet and meaty. Just pull, pull my little pinky one time, Billy. See, guys do this around the house for, you know, 10 years, and we've got a job interview, we forget where we are. Well, that's right, Mr. Nittler. I've been working for Exxon here since 77, and, uh, hey, I tell you what, bud, pull my finger one down. I pick up my papers, thank you. Hey, I'll tell you, you know, tough, tough. Like tonight, you know, I'm coming in the club, you know, I see this lovely young thing sitting out in the alley, you know? I turned and I said, hey, honey, let's get it on. She said, how much do you have? I said, five bucks. She said, well, that'll get you a wax job. I said, what's that? She says, you want it or not? So she took me back in the bathroom, man, pulled down my pants, kicked me in the ass so hard, the wax flew out of my ears. But I'll tell you, it's rough. We are talking about men's flatulence earlier. Yeah, I know. Uh, the girls are saying that, well, we don't, we don't ever do this. <laughs> girls are just as bad. You give a woman a chili dog in the middle of the day. <laughs> you're going to find out about it that night. You'd be lying in bed watching the evening news. You'd be in bed watching the evening news, you know. Gee, honey, this Panama thing is really heating up, isn't it? Yeah. Jesus, speaking of heating up. Are you sick? They will never admit it. Right? Never. I don't know what it was. It wasn't me. Well, it was somebody, boy. I gotta call the fire department. This is bad. Well, I don't know what it was. Something must have come in here and died. Yeah, well, I've been a dad in your shorts. I know that. Well, you're disgusting. You'll do it anywhere. Yeah, but I give you a chance to get the hell out. You can pull my finger and go to your mom. Hey, that's my boy. What steak is the king of steaks? It's big and good. It's hot and spicy. It is sweet and meaty.